because of my recovery to get into the sort of psychedelic space when it's, you know, now that it's become wellness and now that it's become acceptable. I've not been able to uh, entertain Can you explain that to me? Can you explain that to me? Because I'm not an addict, um, but I would like to know. What is it about a psychedelic experience that makes you think that y if you engage that you will somehow or another regress, lose all control, start doing heroin, your life is going to fall apart? You're clearly not the same person. You're clearly not the same person, even though you've experienced the same traumas that led you into heroin addiction in the first place. You have clearly gotten a, a, a certain control over your life, an understanding of yourself, a, a personal sovereignty that you didn't possess when you were an addict. So what makes you think that this entheogen this literal psychedelic connection to a higher realm would ruin your life. Yeah, I know. Because the thing is, I really, really want to. I, so I'm like when I was still using, I took psychedelics in the same way all kids take psychedelics for fun. For fun in a park at a bus stop, you know, yeah. in, and knowing that there's something ontologically profound happening. Like most observably, and I'm talking about myself as a 16 year old. Like, hold on a minute, I'm not real like i am not my memory of myself i am not my projections i am the consciousness that is observing that set of data i'm observing my feelings i'm observing my thoughts i'm beyond it so beyond like all that stuff i was aware that this was profound but also i was doing it on my own with like just kids drinking cider at a bus stop in essex i wasn't doing it like with a shaman or a doctor right, or right. aldous huxley or terence right. mckenna right. or like some brazilian guy with feathers and stuff i was like at a bus stop in the rain in the grimness of grace where yeah. i'm from so like i've maintained this fascination because i feel well the tw i'm a 12-step person and 12 steps is about that there's a spiritual deficiency that causes addicts to become addicts. They're looking for something that they can't find in the world. They're looking for connection. They're looking for a deeper purpose and for meaning. Well, so, they're, not, they're also looking for escape. They're, right? This the is escape like, from the anxiety of being alive. Just the, the existential angst that most people carry around with them. Yeah, it's unlivable with. But like yeah. as you say, most people carry around with them. Like we all have that. So that's yeah, we all the, have a certain level of it. Yeah, and for some reason, the addict type, according to this analysis, and it's only one analysis, and it's the one that I've got clean mm -hmm. with, so it's the one I sort of advocate for. It's the only one I'm qualified to advocate for. The f principle is, if you if you replicate or not even replicate if you create those spiritual conditions like you belong to a community you think about helping others you're willing to look at what the reasons you drink and take drugs for in the first place and you but fundamentally this is the key thing is it what it argues most of all and it's like an ingenious piece of american theology really i would say the 12 steps because it was informed by william james the theologian it's influenced by carl jung of course and like what so it's a sort of a fusion of religious and spiritual ideas and psychiatry, which obviously was in a much more formative state back then. And what it's fundamentally offering you is the drugs and the alcohol are not the problem. The problem is you are self-centered and egoic. You've yes. got caught in yourself. And so like, even once you stop drinking and taking drugs, you're still going to have that problem and you're going to have to address that problem. And when you do, you won't feel the need to drink or take drugs anymore. Now, so what becomes sort of central to the whole ideology of the 12 steps is, in a sense, the abstinence is significant and it's pivotal. You can't drink or take drugs one day at a time. But more important than that, is you've surrendered yeah. you're not in charge of your life anymore right. you, you've given the ego a break yeah like it's like i can't run on that you know you know the story of uh, alcoholics anonymous though and, and bill w the fact that he was into lsd yes i'm aware of that because i'm sort of an amateur historian of it because it's an important sort of part of my wellness it and seems like a contradiction that dude was out there i mean like he's a <laughs> prophet like the guy was a stockbroker right. apparently right. a womanizer and yes indeed took lsd while in recovery and of course all of the materials around that fellowship are very they're like 50 60 years old no one had 10 years clean then no one had 20 right. years i'm 20 years clean and sober. Yeah. no one had that none of those got that there hadn't been that much time which makes you think about vaccine tests how do they know what it's going to do in 10 <laughs> years if you hadn't had fucking 10 years right. like, so like you know they didn't know how those things were going to pan out um so the reason i have this uh <laughs> ayahuasca hesitancy a lot of people are ayahuasca hesitant what are we going to do about that hesitancy like like the reason i have it is because i can't take back personal authority for what I do and the idea is is because I've achieved I've been given something that's quite delicate like when I was using I was destroying my life and now I've been granted a different perspective 
I shouldn't mess with that shit by doing something that would necessarily involve I'm in charge, even though I really want to. When I hear you and other people on your show and Duncan Trotter talking about smoking DMT and you're meeting orbs of pure consciousness, I think the whole reason I came a drug addict, remember, was because I was looking for that. I'm looking for this. This isn't reality. This can't be it. You can't expect me to just stay alive for decades more based on this bullshit. I know there's something else. The culture won't give you it. The culture won't give you. You are divine. You are connected to limitless. And there are other dimensions. There are other beings. The culture is just telling you, get a job. No, no, no. you're going to work in a call centre or a factory That's what, and you are craving the mystic you're craving it but you, you know you're not the same guy you were when you were an addict right you, you're, you're a different much more mature much more experienced person you know the old expression no man can ever step into a river twice because you're not the same man that's not the same river yeah yeah I do that. I just want yeah. to get in that river and I would try to drink it. Off, <laughs> off, oh, fuck but it. Why do you think, <laughs> but why do you think you would do that? Don't you think you've learned? This is what I don't understand. And again, like, you know, I, I enjoy marijuana and I've enjoyed psychedelics, and, but I cannot have anything for long periods of time and I'm fine. Because you ain't an addict, huh? You're not an addict. You not never, know that, you've never taken I, cocaine. I, I, no, I've never taken cocaine, but I do get addicted to video games. I do get yeah. addicted to... Uh, I, I, I could find myself, I think, if I did start doing a lot of coke or did... If I was at a different stage in my life and I wasn't concentrating on being productive and concentrating on being... Like, being healthy, being physically healthy, being physically fit, and also using exercise as a means to mitigate anxiety and for just to keep my mind straight so important to me and that if i didn't have those things and maybe i was drinking every day or doing coke or doing something i could see myself falling apart i could see myself because i think it's just a natural human characteristic yeah and but but right now like if someone said hey are you worried that you would get hooked on something i'd be like no yeah. No, I wouldn't because if I thought I was getting hooked on it, I would just stop because I'm not interested in doing anything that's detrimental to me. I'm not interested in doing anything that's going to tank my life. No, and neither am I really. But I'm like, I guess what we're analyzing is that, like, you know, one of the areas of distinction between our two natures, there are some things that are quite similar. It sounds like we're from pretty similar types of background. It sounds like that, that we both had negative experiences of a step parent. And like, like, I think, I don't know if that's true actually. If you my stepdad's actually a good guy, right? Like, but yeah. at the time, I didn't. But get I, on I did very have negative experiences with my biological father uh -huh. and there was a divorce when I was very young sure. we moved around a lot there was yeah. a lot of stuff along those lines but it's just everybody that seeks exorbitant amounts of attention is fucked up huh. and if you, you want to go on stage like why would you want to go on stage like what kind of a person wants that amount of attention well,